Hey y'all, back with another milkshake, y'all. Bro, we're gonna talk about <laughs> hiding. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Anyway, we're gonna talk about hiding in this video. I'm gonna give y'all the basics, and that's gonna be it. Yep. Okay, I'll stop. Damn. Jesus. Anyway, y'all, I'm gonna give y'all the basics, and that's gonna be. <coughs> Haru, bro, can you not? Yo, let's just get into the video, bro. I'm not even letting them talk. One thing about cutting, y'all, you gotta know them surroundings. Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you gonna not get hit? Like, you gotta know what areas are good. You gotta know what areas your character is strong on. And you gotta know what areas are not that good to kite in. That's number one. When you're on a cipher, when you're on a chair, you want to make sure that you pay attention to where you spawn because maybe the hunter's going to chase you. There's some spawns where you can tell the hunter's going to chase you. Keep that in mind. Also, when you're on a cypher or you're on chair, look around, plan out a route for in case you get off the chair or when the hunter chases you off that cypher because you need to go somewhere, right? You can't just randomly run into the open. That's not how you kite, y'all. You need to use those windows, especially the windows, to your advantage. Pallets as well, but windows are really your best friend, y'all. Like, trust me. They save lives, and they have saved mine a couple of times, y'all. And not just a couple, a lot, actually. So, pay attention to your surroundings. Know where you're kiting. I can make a whole video about, like, strong areas and weak areas. But it also, like, depends on what hunter it is. Because if you're going against a BQ and you're trying to go in, like, a walled area, she can just mirror you. And what did you do? Nothing. You just got absolutely boomed. So, keep that in mind. Now, one thing to also keep in mind is your strengths and weaknesses. And what I mean by that is like some characters vault certain stuff slower or faster than others. For example, forward drops pallets fast. Like he's strong. Like, dang, he's strong. And then you have people like Mind's Eye and she can't do anything. Vaulting slow, pallet dropping slow, dying fast. How, is, how does that happen? How is her dying faster than all her other stuff, y'all? That's bad. But anyway, that's not the point, y'all. The point is... A lot of characters, they have certain things that are they are good on and certain things are just really bad with. So right here, Tour Merchant, she got the fast vault, so I'm not scared to vault in front of this Wu Chang ever. Even if he has blink, which if he does have blink, I make sure not to vault like right in front of him. I'll just have him use blink instead because I'm not trying to get terror shocked. I'm full health. Right here, he hits me. That's fine. I don't really care. But besides your own strengths and weaknesses, you also want to know the hunters. For example, some hunters like Percy and Breaking Wheel do really bad against windows. So you want to make sure you use those against them. You know what I mean? Like you get my drift. It ultimately comes down to who you're going against, like knowing who you're going against, and also knowing your survivor and what they can bring to the table. Right here, I forgot that Toy Merchant has a like a, a glider. I forgot she had that. I would have dropped down if I remembered, but I just forgot because I haven't played Toy Merchant in so long. So that right there is a reason you should know your character. This kite could have been way longer. All right, y'all. Right here, we're going against Hermit's little skinny ass. So. I got the polarity on accident because I didn't know it was Hermit. Like, who picks Hermit in a 1v1, y'all? Like, come on, man. But luckily, I juked him and I went to a locker because I'm not giving him a free stun. I'm just not. So I left. I was like, nah, you got me bent. You got me all the way bent. And he didn't even see me. So you know what? That's a dub ski on my part. I run into a wall. Ignore that, y'all. Y'all do that too. Come on now. Let's, let's be realistic, right? Also, mind you, lockers and chests make sounds. If the hunter is nearby, he can hear you go inside a locker or open a chest. So, just letting y'all know, don't be doing risky stuff like that. Right here, I'm like, I, I got rid of the polarity, so I'm gonna just decode this cipher that doesn't have one. And somewhere in the distance, this dude pulls up. Now, I'm gonna show y'all how to, how to use your pallets effectively and also kind of how to, you know, loop certain areas. Because right here, I can't really leave this area because there is nothing. I have to either get a pallet stun or just get really lucky that he's a little too far so I can leave this area. Right here, I went into another wall, but right here, y'all. Right, hold on. Run it back, Turbo. Right here, I stay behind this wall when he swings, so he can't hit me. You want to always be behind a pallet, like behind the wall when there's a hunter that's about to swing. Because the thing is, they'll most likely swing. When you're behind that wall, like behind the pallet, like the wall area, they can't hit you. Trust me, they cannot. The only way they will be able to hit you is if they walk through the pallet, which in that case, pay attention, y'all, because the hunter pallets and hitbox is sometimes very iffy, but sometimes it's very generous. So keep that in mind. Pallet stunning is like 
you gotta just be patient and see them go through the palette. Like if they step foot in the palette, you just gotta go for it, y'all. Sometimes the hunter will try to juke you into using it and then swing. So usually you're safe to drop the palette once they have already swung, right? Then you're completely safe to drop the palette. Even Naya, I don't think she has the speed to hit you immediately again if you just immediately drop that palette on her. So when Hunter swings, you drop palette. That's when you drop palette. Or when the hunter dares to walk through the palette to test your reaction speed, you drop that palette. Now, one thing about me, y'all, I don't have bad ping. If you have bad ping, y'all, do not be playing rank, please, bro. I have so many people. Y'all, the other day I had a mercenary, bro. He got triple hit in the first 20 seconds after Enchantress died, y'all. Like, how is your ping that bad? Like, guys, come on, do better. Now, right here, another example. Um, I dropped this palette because I'm a mechanic and I need that boost when the hunter chases me because it's a 1v1 anyway, so might as well. Pretend like I'm decoding. I don't know where she's coming from. I see light. I vault this palette to get a boost. And with this boost, I go to this window and I know I can make it, so I'm not even phased. Like, I don't even look behind me. I knew I could make it. So right here, I vault that window without further like questioning. And right here, I vault this window. I'm gonna show y'all how to loop, right? Right here. Keep an eye on the hunter when you're looping because right here, look, she tried to she tried to cut me off. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid, right? I'm not dumb. Right here, she messed up her mirror, y'all. She messed up her mirror. So I get a free, a free rotation. But the only problem was I couldn't completely make it. So instead, when she swings, I drop bot. I don't care. Bot is useless. Sorry, he's useless. Um, they nerfed him bad, y'all. That's so so tough. But anyway, I'm gonna show you how to loop right here. You want to have the hunter always come from the long side of the wall. That way, when you vault that window, you have enough time to vault it and loop around again. Right here, she can't do anything. I can loop her infinitely if I wanted to, especially with broken windows. I can do this for as long as I want. Now, because it's a bloody queen, I can't do this like reliably anymore. But I'm just saying, that's how you loop. You keep the hunter on the tall side of the uh, wall at all times. And when you're vaulting and stuff, Make sure it's a fast vault. You cannot be wasting time on no slow vault, y'all. Trust me, it's gonna be crucial in like little moments. You wanna always be fast vaulting. Now, when you're looping, windows are your best friend. Like you and windows go way back, home school of biscuits, like they are there for you every single time. A pallet is cool too, but a pallet is breakable. A pallet is a one-time thing. If it's broken, it's broken. A window is always gonna be there for you. Number one supporter. Never forget that, y'all. You wanna always kite with a window if you're looping. So, use that window. Keep the hunter on the long side of the wall. Do not let them cut you off ever, y'all. If you're going against the Bloody Queen, looping is kind of impossible. Like right here, girl, I'm dead. Like, I couldn't even fight back. Another thing you need to keep in mind, um, when you have pallets in your looping area, conserve them for as long as possible. Keep those pallets there for as long as possible. Because when you drop that pallet, that is minus one threat to the hunter. Because the pallet is really what they're scared for. They don't want to be stunned because a stun is not really good on their part right so make sure you mind game them like try to mind game them mind gaming isn't reliable like i said but you want to keep that palette there for as long as possible and in case of an emergency where you are forced to use it that's when you use it of course like girl don't try to be like oh the hunter will most definitely swing right here and then just die Now let's talk about business. Let's talk about transitioning, right? Because that is your main way of keep staying alive, like getting different kiting areas. Because if you waste all your pallets in one area, you're gonna die there. You can't, guys, come on. You can't stay there anymore. Just, I'm just being realistic. So this is how you transition, right? You transition when the hunter uses their skill, like right here, I don't know why he did that, but you know, it gives me the chance to get the heck away from here. So I do. He uses his skill, which means he can't catch up to me, which means I can go wherever I want until he gets his skill back. So I do. I leave immediately. Another way, another um, way to transition, like a key to transitioning away from an area, if the hunter breaks a pallet, you can get away from there. Trust me, you can make it. You can get away from there. Right here, he breaks that pallet. He doesn't use his skill, so I can leave. As long as he doesn't use his skill, I can, I'm free to go. He does not have enough speed on me to catch up. So I throw this pallet down. He breaks that pallet. I vault this window. I get another speed boost. I'm gone. Right here, he does use his skill, which means I can't go any further than this, but that is okay. I can just go the other way. So transitioning, y'all, you want to pay attention to the hunter. If the hunter uses their skill or vaults a window, breaks a pallet, that's when you leave. For example, if you're playing prisoner and you're tight kiting around your, um, uh, energy area your stun area which you should do as prisoner like that's really good y'all you want to keep it staying in that area kind of tight kite him around there until he breaks it if he breaks it you transition you get away from there now 
that's when you should transition now it's not always like you don't always have to transition of course but a lot of the hunters like girl you want to get out of there because you're either going to waste all your palettes or you're going to get something like naya and she's pissing all over the floor so you kind of got to leave because otherwise you're going to drown in all that piss and that's disgusting I already kind of went over this in my survivor goals and tips video but your ideal time to use your skills is when the hunter uses theirs so if you have a patient hook and bloody queen mirrors on you that's when you want to use your patient hook right or when naya pulls back her trident that's when you want to elbow pad patient hook perfume whatever i don't know just when they use their skill you use yours action reaction you are reacting you also have your build that you picked in the beginning of the game which consists of usually borrow time and either flywheel um broken windows or tie turners right um keep your eyes on the top right because is that left oh the top left my fault guys my fault gangies keep your eyes on the top left because that's where it says a lot of the stuff that is going on in the game for example if you are wondering when tie turners will run out top left will tell you if you want to know when detention runs out top left will tell you when borrow time runs out that's when detention runs out when you uh, want to know when your boost is back for broken windows, the top left will tell you, y'all. Like, the top left is really there for you. In other words, you can base your kite around getting your broken windows boost back every single time. So every time you try to get out of an area to locate yourself differently, to reposition yourself, just wait until that boost is back, get your boost, get your bag, get out of there. Easy peasy. Right here, I could have used a window boost, to be honest, but I don't think my survivors would have been able to leave the gate fast enough anyway but you know i could have tried also i was on the on the dungeon a little early i'm gonna be honest i was a little early now let's talk about the basics of kiting y'all let's get to the basics right the first thing always keep your eyes on the hunter look behind you when you kite you do not want him to cut you off or sneak up on you or teleport in front of you or jump in front of you and you didn't notice like if a, Lu if a Lucino like jumps in front of you, you want to see him do it, right? So you can react, react, that's the right word, react to what he's doing. Because as the survivor, you're reacting to what the hunter does. If the hunter tries to cut you off, you have to react to that. So keep your eyes on the hunter. Number two, y'all, when you're doing a risky cipher, drop a pallet. When you're doing a risky cipher, a cipher that is in the middle of nowhere with really any, like rarely any pallets or windows nearby, Keep those pallets dropped. In case they teleport or chase you, you want to be able to get that boost and get out of there. Now, a lot of the times, you don't even have to do a risky cipher first. You could just leave it. But let's say it's endgame and it's really your only cipher you have left. Make sure there's a pallet dropped or there's a window nearby that you can vault. In case the hunter teleports, you want to be gone. Also, y'all, when the hunter is nearby, you don't want to vault in front of them. Especially if you think they have blink, do not vault a pallet or window in front of them. Especially if you're full health. If you're full health, just take the basic hit. Do not vault in front of them because they will terror shock you if they are smart. Sometimes they mess it up, so like you're lucky. But just keep that in mind, y'all. Do not vault pallets and windows in front of hunters. And especially not if you know that they have blink. Blink is activated when the surrender button hits 180 seconds. Remember that, y'all. Very important. You do not want to be caught lagging and all that stuff. So just a heads up. And uh, lastly, you can use obstacles as a like cover. You know, obstacles aren't always there to mess you up and make you walk into obstacles. Like, y'all get what I mean. It's not a reliable strategy, but it can work. Oh, and I lied because mind games can also be useful. I know they're not reliable, but let's say the hunter is trying to predict that you're gonna vault a pallet, right? Pretend like you're vaulting, run into it, and then rock, rock away. Like, like I've done it before and it works, y'all. Like, sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it does. And when it does, it, it just like, girl, you just look like a boss. I feel like that would be all for this video, y'all. I hope it helps. Like, mm, I think it's useful. Like, the information I say is useful, yes. It's up to you to practice. Um, I was like thinking i could start streaming and like help y'all like 1v1 y'all or like play games with y'all like that'll be cool but y'all let me know and then i'll try to fix that up and see how that goes because also i'm about to get busy so i don't know if i can be making videos left and right like i'm, do I'm doing right now so i feel like streaming would be a little better but also i don't know what you guys think about that so let me know in the comments once again thank you so much guys for watching my videos in the first place and commenting liking subscribing like girl we like reached like 100 subs i'm pretty sure like bro if we didn't that's embarrassing but like thank you guys so much because i wasn't expecting all that so i really do appreciate y'all for just watching me because like girl i'm just a nobody right i'm just a nobody playing identity 5 out of everything i